Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of you. Continuing with our series of Your Muslim Neighbors, and we are now moving on to another chapter of the Quran, which is known as the chapter of the heights, Surah Al Araf. And uh, we're going to we're going to include in the second uh, episode of this chapter, we are going to uh, talk about there is actually the Ashab al-Araf, or the men on the heights, and so that, that will be coming in the uh, second portion of this chapter. The first portion of this chapter is basically the creation of Adam and the first major conflict, not only major conflict, the first conflict period that uh, man is going to encounter. And this conflict is going to stay with him and continue with his progeny up until the day of judgment. And uh, so that discourse we're going to read uh, today and uh, as according to our, our, uh, our method, we will read a few of the verses in recitation form in Arabic and then we'll translate and then elucidate inshallah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد مكناكم في الأرض وجعلنا لكم فيها معيش قديدا ما تشكرون ولقد خطفناكم ثم صورناكم ثم قلنا للملائكة تسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس لم يكن من الساجدين قال ما منعك أن لا تسجد إذ أمنتك قال أنا خير منه خلقني من نال وخلقته من طين صدق الله مولانا العظيم So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before mentioning the creation of Adam he mentions a principle or a fact actually a fact of life that we really need to reflect on as yesterday we talked about various signs of Allah's creation and uh, his knowledge and his power and his mercy and uh, the um, the various uh, uncountable blessings that he's bestowed upon us. And one of the blessings that probably we're not even cognizant of, we don't even think about, and it's one of the greatest blessings of all, is mentioned here in this ayat, we have established you in the earth. Not only he's created us in the earth, but he's established us and given us supremacy of the earth and given us, moreover, subjected everything in the earth to our benefit. As, as time goes on, more and more of that becomes manifest. And we have made therein your means of sustenance. Now just reflect on this for a moment, you know. We have, uh, you know, around 8 billion human beings, and we have almost as many um, ways of earning and, and uh, pursuing one's livelihood, you know, the occupations, the crafts, the different ways in which people, you know, somebody's, uh, somebody's, somebody's rubbish is somebody's occupation to collect it, you know. And it's just amazing, you know, it, just to see the various, you know, the, the various ways in which Allah SWT has created and, you know, uh, inspired man to pursue his livelihood. Now, he could have just sustained us like he does all the other creatures, you know. They just go out in the pasture and feed or they... You know, they fish or they hunt or they just breathe and they get sustenance. But man is such a noble and such a unique creation that he, his sustenance also reaches him in unique, not only way, but ways. You know, un, you know uh, unnumerable ways in which, you know, man, you know, uh, is uh, provided his sustenance, you know. So this is also something to reflect upon. And being that we... Uh, have you know the, all of these you know these diversified ways of uh, reaching our sustenance and acquiring our sustenance you know while we're in the act of that and we're in the process we should be grateful for that we go out of the home in the morning we go to our job or we go to our shop or we you know go to our lands and cultivate or whatever it is that we're doing you know in our daily occupations this is also the this is a great 
favor and blessing of the creator. And so we should be cognizant of that, reflect upon that, acknowledge it, and be grateful. So may God give me and all of us uh, the tofiq, the ability to do that. So, and then here now we start with the, the creation of Adam. And we have created you and then we fashioned you. And of course, the first creation was our father Adam. And so he was created from the dirt. And actually, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that if you will do a chemical analysis or a break, biological breakdown of all of the elements within the human being, uh, in his physical being, you will find all of these elements in the earth. So we are created from the earth. And of course, we will go back to the earth after the death. And from that, we'll be resurrected once again. So the very fact that we were created from the earth and and made into the, the, the physical shape that we are out of nothing, you know, then for us to be recreated after being something is uh, much more uh, logically possible, even though for the creator of the universe, there's not something that's easier or more difficult. It's all very easy for him. So he mentions here, Allah SWT, he mentions that he created us and then he fashioned us. And of course, he fashioned us, as is mentioned in another chapter, in the best of forms, the Ahsani Taqweem, in the most magnificent and beautiful forms of all of his creation. And then, after creating uh, Adam, then he gave the command to all of the angels. And previous to the creation of man, there were angels. And doing, you know, how many millions and trillions and quadrillions, Allah only knows how many they are and how long they've been, uh, their creation has, uh, you know, when did that begin? In any case, but they were present uh, before the creation of Adam, and they were instructed, moreover ordered by the Creator, by Allah, to prostrate in acknowledgement of the superiority of man. You know, so he has created in another, in the sort of the cow, uh, another area. And this, like most major stories and major narratives of the Quran, they're not mentioned once, but they are mentioned several times. And similarly, this uh, this very this very uh, event, the creation of Adam, has been mentioned several times in the Quran. And when we put all of those narrations together, we get the total and complete, you know, narrative. And uh, here, the angels are ordered to prostrate as a as an acknowledgement of this lofty position. And as I mentioned in another chapter, it's mentioned that God informed the the angels that I am going to. I am going to place into the earth a vice regent. And so they were they were wondering then who would that be? Why not us? You know, we are we are the we would be very suitable for that job. And however, Adam was created, our father, and uh, he was uh, presented to the angels that this is my vice regent, and therefore you acknowledge him and give your salute to him by prostrating. Some say that prostration was a form of bowing. Some say it was actually a prostration to the underground. In any case, it wasn't the prostration of worship. You know, no one is ever going to be ordered to worship other than God himself, but this is a prostration of acknowledgement, of a kind of a salute, if you will. Now, also, Satan, who was part of the jinn, now we have this concept of jinn, which are another uh, sort of creation um, that are akin to man in that they have freedom of will like man. Angels don't have freedom of will. They can't disobey God. That's not in their nature. But men and jinn, which are beings that we do not see, sometimes they do manifest. But otherwise, and Satan was from that. And you will hear this this. You know, we have in our in our in our Western literature the genie in the lamp. You know, so actually that's taken from the jinn, and actually this is perhaps some sort of story, probably uh, a fable. But in any case, uh, the fact that these beings do exist that is a fact, and uh, they are also uh, they are also ordered and instructed to uh submit their wills and uh, obey the creator just as we men and so we and the jinn they are we are the two 
species or, or creations that are going to be held accountable for our actions. And so Satan being created before man, and it's said that Satan, you know, uh, knowing that God is going to ultimately give some the supremacy and the uh, authority to the earth uh, to someone. And so he was looking for that honor to be vouchsafed to him himself. And so now, uh, when this uh, this title and uh, and uh, uh, and this lofty position is granted to Adam, so he, you know, he becomes envious. He becomes jealous. Moreover, he becomes rebellious in front of God. He becomes rebellious, and this is the very nature of Satan. This is why he's called uh, Shaitan in Arabic, and probably Satan comes from this same. Uh, uh, the same root, I'm assuming. I, I, I don't know the, the Latin uh, origin, but it sounds much like shaitan, Satan, shaitan. Shaitan in Arabic means one who is rebellious, you know, disobedient, rebellious, belligerent. That's what shaitan basically means. And this is exactly what he was. Actually, his actual name was Iblis in our tradition, his, just as the, he's mentioned as Lucifer in the biblical tradition. So in the Arabic, he's known his actual name was Iblis, but he's known as Shaitan because of his rebellion against God. And uh, so he was ordered to prosper. He says, no, I'm not going to do it. And he refused to do so. And God asks him. And of course, God knows everything that's going on. He knows what's in the very innermost of his mind and heart, but just to draw out his own testimony against himself. Uh, what is it that prevented you from prostrating when I gave you the order? He said, I'm better than him. I am better than him. Why? You have created me from fire and you have created him from earth. And his uh, assumption was that fire was a, was a more valuable element or a higher level or a higher status element than the earth which is uh, debatable. Uh, regardless of what the, 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 the origin is, uh, being the creation of God, we are supposed to surrender to his order and we are not to rebel against it, right? Also, you can say that uh, the first racist and the first manifestation of racism was from Iblis himself. Satan himself was the first racist. I'm better than him. This is the basis of racism. I'm better than him, her, she, they. Why? Because my basis or my, you know, my foundation, or my heritage or my race or my ethnicity or my color or my whatever is better than whoever. Whereas, as we mentioned earlier, we're all the children of one father and mother. So, you know, the, the, who is better and has a higher status has nothing to do with all of those, you know, all of those uh, dimensions or all of those, you know, considerations. The only consideration that's going to elevate one over the other in the, guy, in the eyes of God is piety. In Akramuk Mindullahi, in Allahi Atqaqum, the most, or the most elevated in front of Allah are those who are the most pious. So then God gave the order, Fahbit minha, laka Okay, get out from here, away with you, down from here. This is not a place where people who can, who are permitted to act arrogantly, leave, you know, in, in toward being among the humiliated. So before he sent out, and actually this is all taking place in the paradise where we began, and hopefully we get back, but to do so, it's going to be a struggle. And uh, that's living a life of servitude, and then we get back, inshallah, God willing. So then, so then uh, Satan says, "Okay, if I'm to be sent out, but underni ilayum your brethren, but give me respite until the day of judgment." So he knows that there's going to be ultimately a resurrection and a day of judgment in which all things will be brought to uh, brought to account. Despite that fact, you know, he, he still rebels. This is the, the, the fire of jealousy and envy, but knows no bounds. Even if one realizes or is, is aware of the fact that this is going to cost him eternal damnation, so be it. You know, the, the, fire, of, the fire of jealousy has consumed his, all of his logic and understanding. And so he says, okay, give me respite until the day of judgment. So God gives him. See, you are among those given respite. 
قال فبما اغويتني لا اقرب دن لهم صراطك المستقيم so as a result of your you know as a sort of a uh, response uh, to your uh, having uh, letting me to go astray as though it's god's fault it's not god you yourself have decided to rebel it's you have who have chosen to rebel but you said so you have let me to go astray okay so i will sit on the path you know waiting you know to to attack all of these the progeny of this individual that you've raised and elevated above me i will remain on your path which is which is headed towards you i will remain as an obstacle in that path and i will attack them from the front from the right from the from the left from the top from all directions and you will not find most of them grateful to you Allah Akbar. So God's response to him is leave out with you from here, humiliated, disgraced. And also, God also proclaims, and whoever follows you, I will fill the fire of, of hell with you and they together combined. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from being among his followers, save us from his attacks, and save us from his clutches. And we're coming back with the completion of this narrative uh, after a short break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So we're continuing with the narrative of the creation of Adam and the jealousy of Iblis, Satan, and uh, as we mentioned, the first manifestation of racism, Satan being the first racist, and the, uh, the fire of jealousy and envy of racism, if you will, uh, brought him to utter destruction. And that's the case in the world today as well. Anyone uh, consumed with envy and jealousy, uh, there's no outcome for that other than damnation, unless one uh, understands his folly and repents, which Satan never did, by the way. And we're going to see, interestingly, the difference between Adam and Satan uh, in various aspects. So now, after the refusal of Satan to acknowledge the the position of Adam and uh, acknowledge him and salute to him in prostration. He's now ordered out. And now he sets about trying to not only since he, and this is the way all jealous people do, envious people do. Uh, jealousy is defined in our tradition as desiring the uh, whatever blessing or whatever goodness someone is enjoying to have to see them stripped of that blessing or that benefit or that positive uh, element whatever it might be regardless of whether the person gets it or not it's like uh, he shouldn't have that whether whether or not i get or i don't get but at least he shouldn't have it and until he has it you know i'm going to be burning with rage and this is one of the most serious of all spiritual diseases and uh, it was so, you know, profound in, in, in Satan that he never uh, even considered the, 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 the idea of repenting, you know. But uh, anyway, that was God's scheme, and that's how it was. So anyway, so now he's set out from the, from the continents and from the closeness of God, and now he's... Uh, but they still remain within the, the, you know, with the area of the paradise, and now Adam and, and Hawa are still there in the paradise. And uh, now the narrative is turned to Adam and his wife. And so God says, Ya Adam, uskun anta wa zawjika al-jannah, fakura min haythu shi'tuma, wa la taqraba hadhihi shajra, fatakuna min al So now God addresses Adam and Hawa and Eve and says, live, abide here in the paradise and eat whatever you like. Enjoy the paradise and all the fruits and all of the wonders that there are there, but one tree, do not come close to this plant or this tree. What was that plant or tree? Of course, in the biblical uh, uh, tradition, they say it was the apple, but it's not mentioned. Uh, various uh, various uh, 
possibilities are mentioned, but it's not mentioned because it's not it's not important what it was. It was an apple, some say it was wheat, some say it was something else. Whatever it happened to be, there was all of this diversity of, uh, of wondrous things that could be partaken. There was only one which is forbidden. So regardless of what it is, it is not to be is not to be partaken of. And uh, this is man's nature, you know, this is how we, and, and of course we can see why it's his nature because Satan is behind there prodding us to do what we're not supposed to. And, uh, you know, with all the wondrous things that we have it available, you know, we still wander off towards the forbidden and by the prodding of the devil himself, as we're going to see the case of the first instance of that prodding to our father, Adam. And so the order was enjoy everything in the paradise, eat whatever you like, but don't come close to this, this particular plant. And if you do so, you'll be among the tyrants, you'll be the among the you'll be among the wrongdoers. So now, what does Satan do? He attacks Adam to get him to break that one injunction. You know, we have so many rules and regulations that we have to follow to get back to paradise, uh, but it only required the breaking of one injunction. He had only one injunction to follow, and that was ultimately broken by the suggestion and see the Mughas Apparendi. Of Iblis. For was was a lahuma shaitan, the yubdia lahuma, ma wuria anuma min so atima. And so now Satan whispers, and this is what Satan does. He has no control over man, but he, he whispers, and that whispering goes right into the heart, into the mind, into the heart. And so this whispering was to, to reveal his, you know, his, uh, Literally, it means the private parts, and that's also the, you know, the uh, in the biblical tradition, it's it's quite similar that after they ate from that forbidden fruit, then their private parts became manifest, and they were not previously, and so that can be physically, you know, it actually happened. So, what were they covered with before this took place? You know, so. We have another verse of the Quran that says, What about Sittaqwa Dahir? And it is in this very this very chapter that the clothing of God consciousness, the clothing of piety, that is the best of clothing. So the piety in which they were observing by following the orders of God was actually covering them and was concealing their what otherwise would not want to be revealed. You know, the one would not want to be revealed. Uh there's physical parts of the body we wouldn't want revealed, and there's parts of our nature, our character, or our behavior that would we would never want to have revealed. So by the disobedience of God, the the that is which is concealed becomes apparent and becomes revealed. And so Satan went on, you know, trying to beguile them. And he he said to them, He said, Actually, your Lord has not prevented you from eating from this tree or this fruit or this plant, simply because if you do so, you'll become among those who are perennially alive. In other words, you will become immortal. And God doesn't want you to be immortal. He wants you to, you know, he wants you to reach your demise and not be challenged, you know, as the only immortal. But whereas the human being has a beginning, no doubt, but he has no end. So anyway, he says, so you, if you eat that, the, you will become immortal. You won't die. Or you'll become among the angels, you'll transform into the angels, and they will go on forever and ever and without any accountability. And he kept at them. He kept at them, you know, various ways and forms until ultimately they ate from that, uh, from that forbidden tree or fruit or whatever it was. And as they ate with the disobedience, now the manifestation of that which was concealed becomes revealed, which was basically, you know, their disobedience. And as their disobedience, and now everything, you know, uh, virtually and literally that they would not want to be exposed became exposed. And also their their own, the parts of the body, which they would otherwise. And when this started, when this happened, now they start uh, placing upon themselves the leaves or the the. The, the leaves of the trees of paradise, which is very similar to the biblical narration as well, to try and cover their, you know, their, their private areas, which have now become exposed, which is symbolic also of, as we mentioned, 
now the sin being committed, you know, the, the disobedience has become, you know, manifest. And this is, you know, quite a hideous thing to be revealed and to become manifest. Allah Akbar. And thereafter, God called out to them. And then God called out to them. Did I not forbid you? from partaking of this forbidden, you know, this, this bush, from this tree, from this fruit, from this plant, whatever it was. And of course, God knows exactly what happened and knew before it was going to happen, it would take place, knowing everything that ever was, that ever is, and that will be. Uh, have I not forbidden you? And did I not also inform you and admonish you that this Satan, he is your open enemy? And now we're going to see the difference, the main, you know, difference between Adam and Satan. Satan, when he was, you know, he was he was taken to task for his disobedience, he increased in arrogance. No, I will, you know, go after the progeny and I will, dis I will dissuade them from your disobedience and I'll send them off, you know, to hell along with me. But whereas Adam, you know, being imbued with humility and, and realization, acknowledgement of his wrong, he and his wife both, Qala, they both, meaning Adam and Hawa, both said, Rabbana They immediately acknowledged their sin. They acknowledged their, their shortcoming. Confession, if you will, in front of Allah. And by the way, confession for us Muslims is in front of God. We don't need to confess to anyone of the creation. None of the creation can get us forgiven. It is God himself who gets us forgive, forgiven. And so they said, oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you don't forgive us and show us mercy, then definitely we will become among the losers. So then God announced, So get down from here, down from the paradise, onto the earth where you will remain enemies one to another. So on the one hand, we're enemies to Satan and his progeny, and even enemies among one another, as we've seen also, the, the particularly those who follow the righteousness uh, against those who follow wickedness. And you have in the earth a place to remain and a facility for a time, for the short time that you will live in your worldly sojourn. And then ultimately, of course, to return back to Allah, you know, uh, for accountability. So this is uh, our stance. May Allah give us tawfiq to the ability to realize this and realize that we do have an, uh, the greatest enemy we have is Satan and our own evil Lord based selves. So may God protect us from following them and follow his guidance. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.